I was actually just going to ask you about Unplugged. Um, I was going to ask if you were involved, but you just said you were. Uh, what mm-hmm. was that show like, uh, like just prepping for it and then the actual show itself? How was that experience for you? Yeah, first thing, I think it was kind of fun because we were going to be doing something we'd never done before. And then uh, it it did take some logistical logistical effort to to just to make the equipment happen, you know, because Kurt did have some sort of abstract ideas about how, what he wanted to do with the guitar and, and things like that. And it's just not as, as easy and conventional. It's like, okay, here's an acoustic guitar that has a built-in pickup, you know, let's just plug it in straight. Let's go. So he had just a lot of, uh, things that he wanted to do that, that took a little bit of ironing out. Um, so there was that. And, but I think the biggest thing was that the night before, we did unplug the day before we went out to New Jersey and we held rehearsals out there and just seeing that, um, instilled a lot of doubt that it was a good idea to do the show because it just wasn't moving along very fast. And, you know, often, you know, like you start working on something, your first pass at it, it's going to be a little rough, a little sloppy, and then it gets a little better and then a little better. And then, with with most groups it sounds like it's going to sound pretty quick and it just was not happening it just seemed like uh like as nightfall was approaching it was just like oh my god you know this is something that should not happen tomorrow this is going to be awful so really? that's i remember how i i felt like going into the di- into the day and and it wasn't until they ran through the man who sold the world where you you heard it and and I think that I, I read something recently where Chris said that that uh, he didn't feel like he had it locked in and he wound up just staying all, up all night and I think inviting people into his hotel room and so they continued to practice you know long after the fact uh, long beyond like what any of us us had seen so I was really surprised the next day to to see what I saw and and it wasn't until hearing Man Who Sold the World that uh, I realized that this could potentially be great. It's amazing. Well, I mean, it's one of their most legendary performances. It's so cool hearing that, you know, there was that uncertainty beforehand and then it kind of just came together like that. Were the uh, the meat puppets, were they there for the rehearsal the day prior? Oh, yeah. How did they? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. That feeling of, I'm not sure if this is going to go well and then they nail it. Was that a common occurrence with Nirvana performances or was that just for Unplugged? Uh, I think really just Unplugged, you know, because... Everything else was something they'd done for for years. You know, the the live electric show was something where, um, you know, you there wasn't really like a rigid, at least in the in the earlier years and all the way up until the In Utero tour, it wasn't so scripted to where you ever really knew uh, what was going to happen. And especially in '92 and '93, the shows were so far apart that. Um, there wasn't any sort of like a baseline normal. So you go in and, and the shows were really kind of all over the place. And some of them were, were really interesting. Some of them were terrible. Um, and some of them were incredible. You know, you just, you never knew what you were going to see, how it was going to end, how it was going to flow. Um, so. And just one more question about a specific concert. So there was, um, I think it was Top of the Pops in the UK. Uh, Nirvana mm-hmm. deliberately butchered Smells Like Teen Spirit. Uh, yeah. Yeah, were you there for that gig? Not at that one. I remember seeing it though. What was your reaction to it? Oh, I couldn't be happier. <laughs> well, what motivated them to do that? Uh, I want to say that that was the thing where they were required to lip sync or at least partially lip sync. I think that that was one where it was lip synced uh, with the exception of the vocals. So, so that was one where they didn't honestly even have to be playing. So in order to uh, draw attention to that, you know, because it is sort of this this thing that's seen as being a little bit phony. And I think that, that some bands don't like this idea of going in there and phoning that in to where they're um, up there pretending to play when they're really not. And so, yeah, more, you know, I think more or less, it's just their sense of humor where this, what's the funniest thing we could do right now? And this is it. So. Is there anything, is there any other uh, funny on stage experience you, you remember from Nirvana? Oof. Um, I honestly should have made a list. It's it's really hard to zero in on anything. They they appear as random thoughts, you know, on occasion. There's you know stuff that you can and can't share, and and it's like I think the stuff that you do remember, it's unbelievably hilarious, but it's just not ready for prime time. 
Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this interview clip of mine with Ernie Bailey, make sure to subscribe for more because there is a lot more coming. Everything on my channel is 100% original. I'm the one conducting all the interviews and doing all the editing. So if you want to support me, the best way to do so is simply to subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.